The whole world is wondering what happened to Malaysian Flight 370 and its 239 passengers on board. And Christians have many opinions, a lot to say about this subject. Stay tuned with me. I'm Winston Davenport. We're going to delve into this issue. Recently, one of my subscribers asked me, what do I think about Malaysian Flight 370 and its recent unexplainable disappearance? This is a terrible, terrible tragedy that has occurred in our lifetime, and uh, it is believed that all 239 passengers aboard that flight have died. The families and friends of these individuals have been informed that their uh, family and friends will not be coming home. The heartbreak is devastating. My heart is saddened to see this tragic loss of life and all the questions that come from it. People wondering, how could this happen? Why could this happen? Well, according to the Bible, according to Jesus, according to Paul, and according to what the Holy Spirit has been saying all along, Christians should have the inside advantage. Christians should have full understanding and knowledge into occurrences such as these and be able to provide answers. Unfortunately, many Christians in today's day and age, many Christians at the forefront of the media, on television, in magazines, have had plenty to say about this issue. And I'm thankful that one of my subscribers did ask me my thoughts on this because I believe that I can uh, shed some light on this matter, as well as diffuse some of the horrendous lies that have been circulating in the church uh, due to misinformed and ig ignorant Christians and their wayward perspectives on tragedy in, in the world. So, first of all, one of the messages that I've heard repeatedly coming from Christian leaders when they've been asked, what happened to this flight? What is your take on this? I've heard them respond with something along the lines of, this is just God's judgment. This is God pouring out his wrath. This is God saying, I will not tolerate other gods. I will not tolerate idols. You know, I, you are my people. Humanity should be worshiping me. And if you're going to choose another God, I will pour out my wrath on you. I've heard this from Christian leaders ever since this flight disappeared about three weeks ago. This is a travesty. For Christians to be speaking like this evinces fully the fact that they do not know God. They have no understanding, uh, no ability to rightly divide the word of truth. They have no idea what a covenant is, first of all. They, they see God as, as this old covenant God trying to draw pictures of God out of the Old Testament and bring them into the New Testament, even though Jesus himself is God and came representing the heart and character and nature of the Father. And, and he taught us to look at the Old Testament and say, this perspective of God is wrong. I've come to show you something new. I've come to reveal the true heart of God. And yet Christians, leaders in today's church are still holding to these judgmental ideals and these judgmental pharisaical attitudes that have kept the world uh, ignorant of the true loving heart and nature of the Father. And this must stop. This can go on no longer. The reason that they believe, and I heard this by two different Christian leaders, that they believe that God would be pouring out his judgment on the 239 passengers and their families of this flight is because uh, Malaysia has become more and more Islamic in recent years. Now, I had the opportunity several years ago to spend many months in the country of Malaysia. I enjoyed my time there. I did a lot of street ministry, witnessing mercy ministries. It was a powerful time in Malaysia uh, of evangelism, of healing the sick, and I saw many signs and wonders there, and I got to know the people of Malaysia, and you know, I don't care what their religion is, these people are God's people, these people are loved by the Father. If we, well, we were still sinners, Christ died for us, we should understand that Christ also died for those people. And as 1 John 2, 2 says, Jesus Christ removed not only our sins as Christians, but the sins of the whole world. And that includes every single individual who lives in Malaysia. Now, 
Uh, the reason that this perspective of God's judgment is so wrong is because it negates the purpose of the cross in the first place. Andrew Womack is an excellent Bible teacher out of Colorado Springs, and he tells this amazing testimony. He used to pray to God and say, God, if you don't pour out your judgment on San Francisco for homosexuality, if you don't pour out your judgment on Los Angeles for the idolatry of Hollywood, if you don't pour out your judgment on New York City for the worship of mammon and, and money and Wall Street, then you'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Because as you know, God poured out his judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah for you know their various sins at the beginning of the Old Testament. Well, God set Andrew Womack right. He gave him revelation of grace. And now on Andrew Womack says, God, if you did pour out your judgment on San Francisco, if you did pour out your judgment on Los Angeles or on New York, you would have to apologize to Jesus. How can he make such a bold statement? Friends, because Jesus did not just take on the sins of the whole world. The Bible says that Jesus became sin itself. All sin, past, present, and future was taken on the cross by Jesus Christ. The list of all of our transgressions was nailed above his head on the cross. That means that the sins were removed from us and placed on Jesus Christ. That means that if God were to judge me or you or any Christian or, get this, anyone in the whole world, including a Muslim in the country of Malaysia, that would be called double jeopardy. God cannot pour out his wrath for sin on Jesus and then also on everybody else because Jesus took their sins. He was the sacrifice, the slain lamb once for all. He was the cutting of the new covenant and the judgment of God ends with the passing of the old covenant. And friends, you should know, if you have been in Christ for even a day, you should know that the old covenant has passed away and we are living in a new day, a day of grace. We are living in the fullness of the times. We are living as the body of Christ in these latter days, these wonderful days, and the judgment of God is no longer, for it has been poured out once for all time, says the book of Hebrews. And like I said earlier, the book of 1 John, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, so clearly says that Jesus did not only take away our sins, sins as Christians, but he removed the sins of the whole world. If Jesus removed the sins of the whole world, let me ask you this. How, possibly, how could God be pouring out his judgment on those sins if they have been removed? Think about that for a second. Now you may wonder, well, if all sin has been removed, does that mean that everybody is going to go to heaven? I'm glad you asked that question. There are Christians who believe that everybody in the world will go to heaven, and these people are called universalists. I am not a universalist because I do not believe that all people will be going to heaven. So I can see it now. I know that because of statements I'm making in this video, the comments are going to uh, fly in, the emails are going to flood in saying, oh, you know, Winston Davenport is a universalist. He thinks everybody's going to heaven. Frankly, if you or anybody else thinks that I believe that way, I don't really care. You're welcome to believe whatever you want. You're welcome to say whatever you want. I'm moving forward and I'm not really interested in, in the criticisms of the people out there who are just trying to find something to be critical about. But I will take the stand of this and, and say that I do agree with the Apostle John when he said that Jesus removed the sins of the whole world. That means that all men have had their sins removed. That means that even those who are not going to go to heaven have their sins removed, have had their sins forgiven. Because the issue of salvation is not a matter of sin. Many people erroneously conclude that sin is what sends you to hell and no sin is what sends you to heaven. Therefore, if sins are removed, you must be going to heaven. Friends, the Bible does not teach that sin is what sends you to hell or that non-sin is what sends you to heaven. Far from it, the issue of heaven and hell is actually a matter of spiritual life and spiritual death, not of sin. Now, sin was a result of spiritual death. Sin was a sort of symptom, a manifestation of a deeper root, which was spiritual death, which was passed along to the human race by Adam in the Garden of Eden when he ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God specifically forbade him from eating. But Adam did eat this fruit. The knowledge of good and evil still persists in mankind. And uh, unfortunately, that spiritual death that happened when Adam ate that fruit meant 
that he did not go. When he died, he did not have the ability to go to heaven, which is the place of the spiritually alive. Jesus came and reversed that curse, and all who accept Jesus uh, does not say that if you accept Jesus, your sins will be forgiven, because all sin was forgiven at the cross, but it does say that if you accept Jesus Christ, you'll be reborn, you'll be given new life. And friends, if you are spiritually alive, you go to the place of the spiritually alive, the presence of God, which is heaven. And that is good news. Now, in regards to Malaysian uh, uh, Flight 370, uh, now that we have established that sin is not resident in these people, God is not pouring out his judgment on that sin, if you hear somebody preach that or anything remotely close to that, just know and be confident that they do not understand a covenant They do not understand the character and nature of the Father that was so clearly revealed in His Son, Jesus Christ. Those people are not speaking of the Spirit. They are not speaking according to truth. They are speaking according to the flesh. And you should, uh, hands down, no questions asked, you should be rejecting what they're saying. The other, co- the other comment, which is actually an article that I read, was written by Anne Graham Lotz, the daughter of Billy Graham, and was published recently in Charisma magazine. And Anne Graham Lotz uh, said... In so many words, I can't help but wondering with the disappearance of this flight if this is a foretaste that God is giving us a foretaste of what the whole world will go through when the rapture comes and we Christians are uh, disappear in the twinkle of an eye and we are gone to be with the Lord forever. We're going to meet him in the air and the whole world will be left wondering, millions and millions of people have just disappeared. Where did they go? And it will be so, uh, so traumatizing for them. Well, my thoughts on this are as followed. Uh, Firstly, Anne Graham Lotz and Charisma Magazine, your eschatology, your end times worldview is so whack. It is not even based on uh, historical evidence. It's not based on the scriptures. It's based really on the, the, uh, the meanderings, the theological meanderings and suppositions of uh, John Nelson Darby, of the Schofield Study Bible. And uh, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but, but many of these people's worldviews uh, in regards to the end times and eschatology have, have been defined by the Left Behind series. And that is straight up pathetic. I will say that right now. So, uh, first of all, I would encourage you, if you have this belief that, uh, that perhaps the Malaysian flight disappearance is just a foretaste of the rapture of the church disappearing and, and going to be in heaven while the rest of the earth suffers for seven years in some tribulation, do your research. I would question that. I would even look for yourself in the Bible and see, okay, what are the verses, what are the proof texts that these people are preaching? Because I guarantee you something, you will not find it clearly in the Bible. You will find that these doctrines, this theology has been painfully, desperately siphoned from out-of-context scriptures and uh, conclusions have been drawn, pieced together uh, in like a pathetic puzzle that ends up not making any sense at all. But get a hold of some good teaching. Ask the Holy Spirit, what do you really have to say about the end times? Open your Bible, see what Jesus actually had to say about this subject, and then get a hold of some good teaching. I would highly recommend uh, Harold Erbily or Jonathan Welton, or I would recommend uh, reading some of uh, some of the eschatological materials that have come out of Bethel Church in Redding, California. Friends, if it doesn't result in joy, if your beliefs about the end time does not result in righteousness, peace, or joy, I promise you that you are not believing an eschatology that is in alignment with the kingdom because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. If any part of your life is not resulting in righteousness, peace, and joy, I promise you, you're off track. Ask the Lord. He loves you. He will bring you back on track just like a good shepherd. The second comment I would make in regards to Anne Graham Lotz and this perspective that was written in Charisma Magazine is, how narcissistic can you be? This is so typical of Christianity. We have an actual tragedy on our, on our hands, the loss of human lives. Just because they're a different skin color than most of us in America doesn't mean that this isn't just tra- tragic. Our hearts should be breaking for what has happened there and the families and friends and the lives of the people involved. This is a terribly devastating situation to us and our hearts go out to these people. We experience the fullness of empathy just like Jesus when uh, when that disaster happened of the building toppling he wept his heart went out he was so sad for the loss of life and friends the Bible says Jesus himself said that the thief 
comes only in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If you think about this occurrence, the disappearing flight, do you see that this is stealing, killing, or destruction? If so, we know clearly from the mouth of the Son of God that this is not the work of God. This is not God's judgment. This is not God's sovereignty. This is the work of the enemy underlying all of this who has come only to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus, however, said that I have come so that you may have life, abundant life to the full till it overflows. Friends, this flight disappearance has nothing to do with the work of God or the work of Jesus. This is a true tragedy. This is a result of a world that has not been yet overtaken by the kingdom of God, the assignment of the church of Jesus Christ, his body. We have not overtaken the darkness of this world yet, and this type of tragedy is a result, and our hearts should be in mourning. And we should not be in a place where we try and take this tragedy and make it about us and say, oh no, this is a picture of the rapture to come. I disagree so much, not only with the conclusion of Anne Graham Lotz and the editors of Charisma Magazine, but the entire heart behind it to me is so painstakingly and embarrassingly selfish and narcissistic that no wonder, no wonder the world rejects Christianity. No wonder it is so difficult to actually and truly express the character and heart of of a loving father to the world around us when the picture of Jesus that has been painted to them is, is in alignment with such ignorant statements as what was written in Charisma magazine. Friends, this was the work of darkness and the result of a fallen world. But the good news is this type of tragedy can stop. As the church rises up to take her place of supernatural authority, as we are the light and take our place as the body of Christ, as the light to overtake the darkness of the world, this will stop. And though, and we as his body will rise up as him, Jesus Christ on the earth today. And the coming of Jesus Christ will be beautifully manifest in his body and i rejoice right now because we are well on our way to seeing that happen god bless you guys let's move forward together with confidence and joy let's not let our peace get disturbed by the tragedy that has occurred here but let's move forward and go we don't understand what happened but these were casualties in the war of revelation and we will learn from this and we will move forward with excitement enthusiasm and joy because the path of the righteous grows ever brighter until the full light of day please visit winstondavenport.com for more materials written teachings Uh, worship soaking sessions, prophetic worship albums that you can stream online for free, and of course, many video sermons. The series on the kingdom of God and the series I'm working on right now called Mountain Moving Faith. All of this stuff will revolutionize the way that you think and it will change your life as a Christian believer. God bless. God bless.